Hi, this is Lori with Time to Be Creative, working again on the wedding album, and I'm going to walk you through um, putting on the cover. I normally would do this at my kitchen counter, so I had some space to move out. So my space is limited here, uh, but hopefully you'll be able to see enough to... Um, to put on a cover yourself if you haven't ever done that before. And so uh, what I've done, this is our wedding album. And I measured my book and determined uh, what size I want my pieces of my cover. And so I have those written down here somewhere. I'm trying to be organized. Um, all right, my pages measure five and three quarters by nine inches, and my spine is two and a half. So I made my back spine a uh, piece of chipboard three inches by uh, five, no, by six and a half. I decided to do six and a half. And then my front and back cover, I decided to make six and a half by ten inches. So I've already cut those pieces out. And then you want to uh, put your tape on the edges of those pieces. A score tape or if you use a different brand. Um, I have a half inch tape that's like score tape. Because score tape's the brand name. And um, this is marked American Crafts, so I'm not really sure what that's called. But because the book is a little bigger than what I normally uh, make, I went ahead and used the half inch tape. So I went ahead and I just taped my edges of uh, the uh, chipboard. And then I gave this a good press. Because you want to make sure that that tape is um, attached very well to the chipboard. I'm going to set that aside. <clears throat> and now I decided to use the dotted paper on my uh, for my pattern pack, which is the um, Blanc Boutique by uh, Paper Studio. This is a pearlized paper. It has a real slick surface. And uh, I cut this. I added an inch on each side. So I cut this down from the 12 inch because I need three pieces to be able to cover my book. And I have to overlap and, and uh, connect this paper. And because I don't want a seam on the, um, say like, I don't want my seam to end up here on my book. I either want it to be somewhere on the front or back or maybe down the center of the spine because you, there you can cover it and it's not going to get as much wear and tear and possibly separate so you want to think ahead and not have your seam if you're seaming your paper together to be on any of your corners and so to avoid that um, I'm going to really stretch this out so what you do is you just overlap your paper You put on your, your tape, <clears throat> and you really want it to <clears throat> adhere well. So you just um, come along the edge as close as you can get it. I'm going to put two strips. As they say, you don't want the book to come apart, so don't skimp on your tape. This tape's a little difficult to tear. And I'm going to really burnish that down, give it a good press. Okay. And then I'm going to lift that tape up. I think I can have things opposite of how I normally would work. So then you're going to come in and pick up your tape from that strip 
of glue. Okay, and then you're going to overlap your paper. So I'm just going to sit this right at the edge of where my tape finishes, and I want to get that on as straight as I can. And then again, you're going to give that a really good press. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to set that aside. It's easier to work with the smaller piece of paper. So I'm going to go ahead and add two more strips of tape. Now I like to have an inch on each side to fold in on my cover. That seems to work best for me. You may find uh, that you like to have a little more or a little less. But you want to make sure you have enough to wrap your book. And always remember to really press that tape down well. And then you're going to remove the paper part of the tape. And then you're going to adhere that whoop, to the other end of your paper. Again, get that on as straight as you can get it. I can't talk and line up paper at the same time, so I apologize. And I got that a little crooked, but I think that'll that'll be okay. All right, so then you want to you want to lay out your cover and have an idea of where you're going to put your pieces. And so I want my spine in the center. Oh, that's right. I was going to show you. I didn't tape this, and all I did was just um, you want to tape your chipboard pieces. Just run your tape down that outer edge. If your book is really huge, and I might do that on this one, not that it's really huge, but um, you might want to run a piece of tape down the center of your page or two, depending on the size of the book. You don't want any bubbles. You don't want your paper to lift up at all. So like for my 10 inch, pages. I'm just going to run a piece of tape down the center. Now some gals I guess just eyeball this. I um, do a little bit more than eyeballing because I don't trust myself. But you can do whatever works for you. And uh, remember to press down that tape. I did my outer edges on my bigger pieces. I didn't do that center. Okay. So then you want to eyeball this and um, make sure your pieces fit, that you have enough paper. Now I'm going to have a lot of extra on the ends, and I'm going to trim that off. You want about an eighth of an inch at least in between your pages. Now a lot of the gals use either a ruler or two pieces of chipboard to measure that and to keep themselves straight. I like to use um, this ruler that I have that has a grid in it, if I can get that to work, to keep myself straight of where I want my pages to be, my um, pieces to be. And I always mark it with a pencil. So that when I'm trying to lay in my pieces, I have a guide. 
uh, of where I want to put them. And so as I said earlier, you don't want your seams on the corners of your binding of, of the book. So this one's going to hit, um, I figured if I make this a couple inches in from the, from the edge of the binding, I can do something decorative. decorative. So I'm going to slide <clears throat> this piece down a little bit. And I know I have about an inch to work with on either side. So I'm thinking I'm going to have it lay out like that. So I have a seam here and then I have a seam down a little further. And I like to mark off Use a smaller ruler because oh dear, because my I'm working in a tight space here. So I want to make sure I've allowed an inch, so I want the edge of my book to come about there. And I like to mark just a little line on either side top and bottom so that when I'm putting my pieces down I have a place where I know I want to put it. Okay? And then I usually mark it with a ruler an eighth of an inch and I use this as a straight edge. Of course, that's not going to work for me today because it's a little bit off. That's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and mark my inch. Now, if I was standing at my kitchen counter, this would be a little bit easier. It's easier if you stand. Now, I see that's where I want my, my uh, back spine. Sometimes the tape gets a little bit in the way of where you can see where you're going. <clears throat> I'm going to use this ruler, I think, for my in-between spacing. You want to make sure you get it straight all the way down. I have a better edge on this end. I'm going to flip that around. So it's about an eighth of an inch. Alright, so I'm going to lay my ruler down. Just going by my center sheet of paper there. Because like I said, I got that one sheet. It's off a little bit. And I like to butt my piece of chipboard right up against that ruler. So now I'm going to take off my tape. That's lifting up a little bit there. So I'm going to press that down again.
for some reason, I'm having trouble with this tape. So I'm going to add a few more pieces right over top of it. So I want to make sure that this one adhere really well. We had snow again here last night. I'm in the northeast and it's the middle of April. So I've got the heat turned up, but I think I turned it up a little too far. Okay, so now I've got my tape on there. This is my spine. Putting my ruler down as a guide. I'm going to slip that into the markings that I made and put that right up against my ruler and then come down and put that right into the little grids I put on my paper. And then you're going to come in and really give that a good press. <clears throat> now I'm going to use that again as a guide. I've got about an eighth of an inch there. I'm going to mark my edges. And that's a little thicker than my ruler, so I'm just going to eyeball this. I apologize, but I need to take off my, my sweater. Uh, so again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take the tape off of the chipboard. Sometimes that's the hardest part. I guess the score tape brand does come off a little easier. Okay, last one. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing. I've got my ruler as my guide. I've got my eighth of an inch spacing marked. I like to put the uh, top edge in first and then kind of just guide that down. and then give that a good press. I'll make sure I press the center because I put tape there. And I'm going to come in and do the last, the last edge here, the last side. Get my ruler in place. Remove my tape. Normally I just use the quarter inch tape, but sometimes when you have a larger project, it is um, Nice to have the half inch. 
and cover a larger surface. Okay. So now I'm going to hold my ruler in place, give me that straight edge, and hopefully you can see, because I have my arm in the way, I'm going to come in about an eighth of an inch. I'm going to carefully drop in that other sheet. And then I'm going to give it a good, good press. So now you see I have about an inch around the outside edges, except for the ends. I've got a lot of extra paper here, and that will just make a messy inside cover. So I want to go ahead, and this is much, too, much too large. So I'm going to bring in my, if I can find it, my cutting board. I'll just take off my cutting board underneath here. And uh, I'm going to trim that off. I'm going to use an X-Acto knife. You could use a pair of scissors that you could um, measure. I'm going to use my ruler. And I want about an inch. So I'm just going to line that up, take off that extra paper. Now while I'm here, uh, in order to get a nice corner, um, you want to leave about an eighth of an inch on the corner. And I'm just going to come in and take that extra off as well. That might be a little more than an eighth of an inch. You can always trim it again. But this will help us have a nice tight corner on the cover. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing at the opposite end. Now, as you're building your books, you may find you like a little less or a little more. And uh, certainly, you can, whatever your preference is. I think I just cut a big piece of plastic off my ruler. Oh, yay. Okay, so then I'm going to do these corners as well. And then again, this corner. Now the next thing you're going to do is we need to tape all of this. You need to tape your paper and you need to tape your chipboard. So I'm going to do a little bit of that and then I'm going to go off camera and finish it up. But essentially what you're going to do now I'm going to use my quarter inch score tape for this. You're going to start at one end, line that right up to the edge, and you're going to come right across this way. And put your score tape down. You're going to do that on all your edges your outside edges. Um, I don't, you don't need it in, on the inside here. And then I'm going to do it on the uh, my flaps as well. So I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to turn the camera off and finish up taping this project. Then I'm going to show you how I fold it down. And we'll go from there. I'll be right back. <laughs> 